what's going on everybody we are back with another episode of robert garcia unfiltered we had a busy busy weekend filled with boxing we got our coffees ready <laughs> yes. it's gonna be a pretty long episode you're tired yeah we're tired right now uh we're Friday, gonna be saturday every day crazy crazy so we're gonna be talking about top ranks uh card that happened in arizona this past weekend and then also the vegas card in uh i mean the pbc card in las vegas um, I don't think we're going to get in touch with the Golden Boy card that happened, but we'll touch a little bit that at the end. Uh, but let's begin with top ranks card. Art Barrera Jr. became 4-0, four knockouts after knocking out Kevin Soto in the second round. Um, there's always going to be those fans that say it was an early stoppage because they didn't see the ref count, count him out, but... Talk to us a little bit about what happened with that knockout. Yeah, we we look. Uh, I think it was it was a great performance for Art Barrera. He started off very patient, measuring out the guy. And the guy, you know, Pita knows. You know, we know the guy. The guy wasn't going to be just somebody like, you know, like like an easy step, like an easy fight just to go out there and get the win. I think you know, top. He had he had his win with top rank uh, in February, and uh, and he got a quick first round knockout. They they didn't see much. So they told me we could bring them back right away, but you know they uh, they put them in you know against a solid kid that that was really going to test them. That's why I, after the fight, the first thing I hear from everybody from top rank, we love him. He fucking looks sensational. He's good. He's great because he showed against a guy that was that was that was that was game. You know the guy was game. He wasn't just a, a guy that was going to go out there just to take a punch and 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 take a knee and and don't get up because. We we've seen that happen a lot of times. Yeah. But uh, you know, what 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 Art did showed that, you know, he really is that talented and has that tremendous power. He uh, you know, he started off pretty pretty calm, you know, just measuring with the jab. That guy kept coming, kept coming. And then after like the first after the first half of the first round, uh Art started landing two or three punch combinations that were pretty fast and uh and landing really beautiful. Then the bell rang. Uh, he won the round. The bell rang, and I told him, you know, those combinations you got to follow up with a body shot. Mm -hmm. And he did that a couple of times during those combinations. But then when 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 the last combination came, you know, he just it wasn't even that hard of a left hook. Yeah. If you see the video, it wasn't even that hard of a left hook. He just threw the perfect combinations, it's landed at, at the right spot. He's just naturally so strong that that put the kid out. The kid fell, you know, straight in his back. Bounce, his head bouncing the in the yep. in the, uh, in, the, in the canvas. That's where the red right away waved it out. Okay, yeah. but <laughs> what people don't know because yeah, like a lot of people saying the ref should have given him a chance. The ref didn't even count. What's going on with boxing now? Mm -hmm. People don't know, and 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 and, and you know, it's not. I don't want to laugh about it, but it is kind of funny. Yeah, but it's not like something like like that you that you laugh about about you know what the kid. Not I don't I don't think you have to say what he said, but that. People don't understand what the referee does when when somebody gets knocked out like that, and the referee gets close. You're you're the only one that's right it was, the ring. It wasn't even the ref; it was the doctor. The doctor. Oh the, yeah, yeah. The doctor was already in, so it was already seconds after he had not gotten been knocked out. He was already sitting down when the ref was trying to hold him down. The kid was kind of lapping, smiling, and trying to sit up. Okay, people are thinking, oh, he's fine, he's fine. He's no, okay. uh, the reaction is because they're they're athletes, they're in they're in great shape. The kid was in shape. Mm -hmm. He you, you know, his heart is, you know, he wants to continue. Just like how many fighters get dropped so bad, get up and their legs are wobbly, yeah. and the ref stops the fight and they're asked, they're saying, Why did you stop it? I could still continue and I wanted to continue. They couldn't continue, but in their heads, they wanted to. So same thing with those. this kid. Same thing with this kid. You know, the red was holding him down. When the doctor came in, I was already there. You know, I right right away I took the stool and I was I was asking if I if they wanted me to cut the 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 glove the the the, the gloves off, or, you know, take off the gloves and then cut the handles up. The doctor asked the kid some questions. The kid did not respond right. You know, I'm not gonna say what he said, what he responded or anything, but it was it was it was actually sad to to hear yeah. the kid respond something. Completely nothing not. compared, nothing, nothing, nothing to do with the question, really. With, with what the rev asked him, and he responded smiling, respond yeah. like, like you're thinking he's good, but what he responded was not good, right? What he responded was not good, and 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 people don't understand that people didn't hear it, people didn't see it, but you know, the rev asked him a few questions, and 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 what the kid responded was actually, I thought, I felt bad, I felt sad, like, what the fuck. 
Did he really respond that? Yeah. But people don't know that. People don't see that. And people are thinking, oh, they stopped it. No, the kid was hurt. Right. Yeah, that was one. Yeah, a few seconds after, maybe a minute after. Uh, it was good. It's work. a good thing that, yeah, that the ref waved it out right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that left hook, he landed alone, does a lot of damage. But then the second impact when his head hits the, the canvas, that's a whole nother thing. And and the referee did the right thing. Obviously, you know, you could say the ref could have counted to 10 or give him an, a count or whatever. But like you said, every fighter's instinct is to get up. So the kid would have got up when when Nonito dropped Montiel with the left hook. Montiel and he got up. He got up. He got up. He got up and he reacted like, no, I could do it. But would, would anybody have, 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 have had been mad if the ref would have just stopped it right there? No, because you see the way they land and, and the ref did the right thing. How soon can we expect to see him back in? But let me go back to to the same thing, like 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 with the Nonito fight. It was a championship fight. Montiel yeah. was the WBC champion. So maybe right there you give him the, the, the benefit the of the doubt. So the ref yeah. always yeah. wants to give a yeah. give a chance to the champion. You know, it's a close. Maybe you know, give him a chance because it refs, experienced refs do that. Mm -hmm. You know, this kid honestly, it would have been sad if they would have actually let him get up and and you know maybe the the commission. Uh, would have probably told the, the ref, you know, be careful, don't do that. Those those kids could really get hurt. Right. It would have ended bad. Yeah, it could it could have ended really bad. Uh how soon can we expect to see Art Barrera I back think, in? I think they gave him the uh, kind of a tentative date for May 18th in San Diego. Mm -hmm. Um so right oh, away I, I think they told you right away in the ring. <laughs> you yeah, walked right away. away. Uh we'll bring him back May 18. Um uh, Hey, that's a San Diego card uh, they're having here. Navarrete main event. Navarrete, With Navarrete. Yeah. And then we also have uh, Santiago. Giovanni Santiago on that card. So it'll be it'll be a good card to be in, you know, here in Southern California, San Diego. It would be awesome. It would be, it would be, it would be a great card. So I'm waiting on, on the on the final, you know, confirmation. yes, confirmation. But it looks like like he is uh, May 18 in San Diego. That's good. That's good. All right, moving on to, we're going to go a little bit quick because we got a lot of fighters that we want to touch up on. So moving on to Emiliano, he became 9-0, seven knockouts after having a unanimous decision victory over Nelson Hampton. This is his second time going the distance. Give us your guys' thought on this performance because a lot of people thought we didn't see the same Emiliano that we usually see. Well, see, the thing is that we're, we're the world of boxing world. I know boxing and I know how it is, but the whole the whole boxing world, are expecting to see the Milano that, that goes out and destroys all his opponents. This time he was in against an opponent that was durable, that was that was game, that uh that was trying, that was you know experienced when it comes to surviving, to avoiding those hard punches. So everybody oh he didn't have a good performance. But that's that's because yeah the opponent was durable the opponent had experience the opponent was was tricky. So those the, Emiliano might be learning more from this type of fights than from the ones that are getting knocked down in one round. Right. You know, even though it's nice to say I'm ten and zero with ten knockouts and everybody's out. You know, you learn from 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 That's from right. this kind of fights that uh that challenge. give you a hard time, that challenge you, that that uh guys that are, that have experience where they know how to survive. Mm -hmm. So it was it was a good learning experience for for Emiliano. I think the kid is. Is is got everything that that uh, that a uh, promoter uh, wants for a boxer. The kid could fight. Uh, he's getting better and better. This fight doesn't doesn't say, oh wow, look, he didn't look too good. Well, he fought a durable guy, and he's learning. He's, he's getting better. Exactly. He only has what was that six or seven fights? Uh, he nine. 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 Okay, nine. so yeah, only has nine. So you know, there's another. That's nine. You know another 10 fights before he even you know because he's young so mm -hmm. so I don't I don't I don't think that they're gonna be rushing him so I think you know maybe like you like we say maybe he didn't have his best performance but he did fight a durable guy he did fight a tricky guy a guy with experience a survivor so you know good win for him you know that's the way it is yeah sometimes uh for the for the young fighters uh getting getting in rounds against somebody like this uh, ends up benefiting them more than just going out there and getting a quick first round knockout obviously you know the quick knockout or the sensational kind of performance looks good for the for the uh, Instagram for you know for your social media uh, stuff, but for the development of the fighter, you need sometimes you need to 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 uh, uh, to go the distance and 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 know how to um, how to handle you know somebody who's holding you who's you know what I mean like you need to 
you know, uh, be able to handle different situations that are going to happen in the ring. Um, you know, you're not going to go in there and knock everybody out. So, you know, it, it, I, I think it, it, those kind of performances are actually good for Emiliano in the long run. Um, in the post fight interview, uh, some I forgot who asked him, but someone asked him how he felt in that weight. Um, I think he's going to be moving up to one one forty. He he said. Emiliano. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. How how would you guys see him at that? Well, that I mean, I, I, the opponents are pretty much going to be the same right now, kind of. You know what I mean? Like yeah, at, this, at this stage, it doesn't make a difference. One forty, one thirty five, one thirty. He's going to be fighting the same same type of guys. Mm -hmm. So he's going to say, "I feel stronger." I feel you know because but this is going to be the same punch. But you know when when you talk about uh fighter already fighting ten rounds championship fights. That that makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. So I I didn't know that. I didn't even know that he that he said that he he might be moving up to one forty. Yeah. All right. Talking about that division, moving on to Lindolfo Delgado, he became twenty and 0, 15 knockouts after stopping Carlos Sanchez in the seventh round. He started off a little slow, um, kind of like studying his opponent, but at the same time, I can kind of see the respect he has for Carlos because they used to train in the Olympics. Um, what instructions did you give him in the corner that made him that made him pick up the the rhythm of the fight? I I think, you know, we obviously give him instruction. And I told him, look, Lindolfo, you lost the first two rounds. You pretty much gave him away. Uh, uh, people from top rank actually came up to us when I was in the corner. Mm -hmm. He's like, you know, he's behind 2-0. <laughs> you know, he's behind 2-0. Right. So I'm like, yeah, I know. But, you know, let us, you know, be patient. Mm -hmm. You know, Lindolfo, Lindolfo's always going to do that. It's not just because that guy was his friend. That guy was his friend. And they know each other from the from the Mexican Olympic team. They train together. They spar together. Uh, I brought it up. Roommates. I, I brought it, uh, Yeah, exactly. I brought, I brought it up to Misael, to Chino. And, uh, and I told him, hey, Ch hey, Chino, what do you think? You know, Lindorf's fighting a, a friend of yours. And he's like, he's like, yeah, he's my friend and this and that. But you know what, Robert? He was really close to Lindolfo. Lindolfo and him were really close. They were really good friends. I was, I was his friend too, but... Lindolfo and him they more. Were, it was more. So so I, that's when I get like, it. It's gonna be hard because Lindolfo told us he didn't want to fight. He, he didn't want to fight him. Yeah, oh yeah. When they told us about the kid, you know, I told Lindolfo, I didn't even know, but I told him this is the guy you're gonna fight. We already approved him because I watched the guy and I said, yeah, that's a good fight for for Lindolfo. He'll, he'll go some rounds. Uh, Lindolfo, Lindolfo told me, nah, please tell him to change me opponent because I don't want to fight him. He's my friend. I've known him for many years. We trained together. I and but I told him, but he said yes. <laughs> so he doesn't care. He's right, fighting you. Right. He said yes to the fight, Lindolfo. Yeah. We would, they wouldn't tell us that's the opponent unless the guy had already said yes. Right. So I told Lindolfo, Lindolfo, but he said yes. So you you <laughs> you say no, but he said yes. But anyways, so I still went back, told uh, Rick what's going on, and you know, obviously they already had a signed contract. Mm -hmm. There's nothing they could do. I told Lindolfo, sorry, but there's nothing we could do. You got to find him. He's like, all right, fuck it. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. But uh. After the fight, Lindolfo did tell him, you know what, uh, you know, I didn't really want the fight, uh, but it's part of the sport. And the guy was okay with it. You know, he right. didn't, he didn't, uh, he didn't complain or anything. But yeah, you know, it was, it was the first two rounds were kind of too slow for Lindolfo, but that's just the way he is. That's the way he's going to be in every single fight. Mikey, Mikey used to do that for four rounds, you know, and we would get mad at him and we would tell Mike, you know what? I'll pick it up. I'll pick it up, and then he would take care of business. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's a lot of fighters like that. A lot of fighters that start off slow, that you know, you know, just touch, touch, and you know, they give away the first, but they're studying their opponents. Right. I think that's what Lindolfo was doing, and uh, eventually started landing good punches, dropped him in the fourth, and then stopped him in the seventh. So you know, in fifth, fifth, it was fifth, the fifth first time was the fifth. Yeah. Okay, well, fifth, and then the seventh with nice right hooks. You know, uh, the first one was right in the ear. And it hurt the kid, stunned him, and went down. Got up, but then con you know continued back. He was game. You know the mm -hmm. kid. The kid obviously also wanted to wanted to win. But uh, you know Lindolfo has great power. Lindolfo mm -hmm. is 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 very powerful. He sometimes we even feel like he doesn't even know or doesn't even believe how hard he is. He is because he you know he's always taking his time. Mm -hmm. But that's just his time. That's mm -hmm. just the way he is. Yeah, uh, everybody from the matchmakers to everybody. Told me how great he looked and how much they, how happy they were. So that that's good for us. What did you think of his performance, Vita? Yeah, us watching it. Um, obviously, I didn't go to the event. I stayed back at the gym. It was on a Friday. We had sparring, so I stayed back. Um, I watched it with my grandpa. And sometimes when we watched, when we were watch, when we watched Lindolfo, we get kind of uh, like anxious. Obviously, we're not working the corner, so we don't hear what he's saying. We don't know what you guys are telling him. Obviously, we know you guys are telling him to pick it up because we could tell just because the way he's performing. But we get a little anxious, like we're like 
like, damn, he's giving away too many rounds. And, you know, but like my dad said, he's got insane kind of power that that could change the fight at any moment. I think um, <clears throat> as he steps it up in in, in, in competition, uh, when he fought, you know, like Pollo, another undefeated uh, kid from Mexico, um, he didn't give away the early rounds or, you know, he, he started off a little bit faster. I think as, as the opponents start getting better and better, he understands, too, that he can't be giving away those rounds. Um, that was the one performance where he probably from the beginning of the fight to the end, he was he was busy. He was using his jab. He wasn't kind of giving rounds away. Um, I think we'll see that, you know, as as, as the fight starts to develop. You know, we, we talked about how he knows, you know, the the, the how he he's friends with 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 his opponent. Um, I think that's also one of the reasons he started off a little bit slower. Um, I would assume that they that they, you know, they did a lot. Well, I do know that they did a lot of sparring, but just from the the styles and they were in the amateur team together. Lean Dolfo was was the better amateur. He was the Olympian. I would assume he was getting the better of him in sparring and he kind of knew what to expect already. So, um, yeah, I, I, I didn't, you know, put too much into him losing the first couple rounds. But us watching at home, me, you know, me and my grandpa were a little a little kind of pissed off like, oh, fuck, this dude doesn't pick it up. But, you know, he got the job done. Right. Um. This was his second fight back to back, ending in a knockout. He just re-signed with Top Rank as well. Will we see him with an, against another undefeated contender in the near future? Well, will, will you guys push? For we that? don't. We don't. We don't. We don't know who's who. Top Rank or who who they could bring that's undefeated. You know. Mm-hmm. You know they don't have to be undefeated. There's, there could be an. Un, there could. There, we could. There's. There's a lot of undefeated guys that can't fight much, and there's two undefeated. That doesn't mean that's going to be Lindolfo's next opponent. Mm-hmm. You could be a guy with three losses, but but it could give him the toughest part of his career. Right. So so the record doesn't mean anything. If are we going to fight somebody undefeated? No, that, that that's not going to make a difference. I think I think Lindolfo, he just keep performing. Obviously, he resigned a contract. You know, we're very happy. Top Brand has done a great job. You know, they've done a great job with so many fighters. You know, so they're doing the same thing with Lindolfo. I think. Uh, I think he's going to be fight by fight. His next fight is going to step up. You know, he's stepping up in level of competition uh, slowly uh, until we know that, until we could say he's ready for the world title. Mm-hmm. I think I think he's just one or two fights away from maybe fighting for the world title if any of the champions are there, you know, willing to, to give him the opportunity. Mm-hmm. You know, because if you're not ranked number one, you can force the champions you know so right. so the champions could could say okay we'll go through the top 15 and the ranks say okay let's let's go after this guy maybe Lindorfo could be one of those and all all four sanctioning bodies he he should already be ranked in the top 15 mm-hmm. so any of the champions could say hey why not go after this guy so we're just gonna wait for the shot you know the top rank could also work something out where they they go after a champion and, and talk to, to the champions promoters. Hey, let's do this together. You know, something where we could sell it to Mexico. Mm. You know, a, you know, Azteca will pay money for, you know, where it may, maybe it would be a good, it would be worth for the other promoter and the uh, the fighter to to consider it. Right. So, you know, there's a chance. So we're, we're just going to keep doing our thing. Uh, he'll be back sometime in, in August, I was told. So we're just going to keep doing our thing. We just have to continue winning. You know, it doesn't matter who the opponents are. Just got to continue winning. He's already in a position where where we could get that call. Or every win is going to be putting him up in the rankings and the rankings higher and higher. So, you know, I think by the end of this year, he should be up in the top five and all three, four organizations and um, could be ready for, for a world title. Man. Maybe, maybe by the end of the year, who knows? Like I said, if the champions... And the promoters decide, hey, well, let's give Lindor for a shot. Maybe, maybe we could get it. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, moving on to Raymond Murataya. He he became 20 and 0, 16 knockouts with a unanimous decision win over Soli Sani and Don Jenny. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, same thing with Raymond. A lot of people believe that he didn't perform how he usually does. Was there anything leading up to the fight that made him you know what? He didn't he's had four straight wins by knockouts on 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 pay-per-view on, on you know right you know coming event you know he's been he's he's his his name has been up there with with the best lightweights in the world and uh and he's had four wins by knockouts uh very impressive wins mm-hmm. so that's what everybody is expecting so he goes in and doesn't have the best performance of his life you know because they're expecting the knockout that knocker, the, that that mm-hmm. spectacular knocker, that that explosiveness in in himself. He's so good that people are excited. Exactly. Uh-huh. So so because of that, because he didn't get that, you know, some people might be saying, you know, and I'm hearing it, you know, that he's not what everybody thought or whatever. But one fight doesn't doesn't mean anything, you know. 
four wins in a row was the best light when everybody's afraid of him. But then one performance that wasn't what they expected is like, okay, so maybe not the same. But people don't know. Every every fighter knows that in boxing, you know, you go in the ring and the world sees you fight, but they don't know what goes behind, you know. Remy wasn't 100% for this fight. And, I, and, you know, there's no excuses. There's no, you know, I'm pretty sure Remy don't even wouldn't even want me to bring it up, but he wasn't hundred mm percent. -hmm. He, he wasn't hundred percent. We're not going to say what, what was going on or anything. He wasn't hundred percent. He couldn't mm -hmm. do what he normally does. I, I want to bring him back quick. I'm already talking to top rank about bringing him back quick because, because I know what Remy is. I know what Remy can do, you know, and, uh, and we're going to, we're going to bring, uh, hopefully we can make it happen, mm -hmm. bring him back quick. And, 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 and everybody will forget, you know, People in boxing, they forget the four badass performances he had because of this last one. Mm -hmm. But then he goes back and does the same thing he was doing, and nobody will remember this. You know, that's just the way it is. It's just the way boxing is. You know, people don't, <clears throat> don't uh, people don't, 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 they only remember the, your last performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's that's why it's the, the most important thing is to bring him back right away. Like you said, you're already talking to top rank to see what you could work out to bring him you know, bring him back, uh, you know, as soon as possible. Uh, the performance wasn't the best, you know, he's had, like you said, he's had so many performances back to back to back where he looked, you know, like the, the you know, one of the top five, 10 best lightweights in the world. And, you know, this performance wasn't, wasn't up to that. Obviously it's, it comes at a bad time where, where he's ranked number two for the WBC for Shakur Stevenson. Um, you know, the stuff with social media, bringing up Raymond, possibly fighting Shakur Stevenson and, you know, whether his name was brought up, you know, uh, we'll talk, you know, we'll get into that right now with, where, you know, we actually had a FaceTime call today with Shakur Stevenson at the gym. At least back was there. He FaceTimed Shakur. We got to talk to to him a little bit about that. Um, and uh, so this performance came probably at the, at the worst time, you know, when 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 his name is being brought up the most to fight Shakur Stevenson. Obviously, you said Duffy, we, we brought up Delfimo Lopez. Um, so it, it comes at, at the worst time. But like you said, it, the most important thing is to bring back right away so people could see, you know, could see Raymond again. He can have another good performance because, um, you know, he, we we know his name. You know, we know his 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 abilities, his skills. Uh, he belongs with the best lightweights in the world. You know, just wasn't able to show it on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. He does want a title shot with Shakur. He, I interviewed him and he was telling me. Um, I know you guys reached out to top rank a few weeks ago before Shakur signed his fight for July. Why do you think Raymond's name wasn't brought up for that? You know what? I, that, I wasn't told that. You know, I I said you know we're ready. We could we could take that that fight and, and okay, that's good, that's good. But they it looks from what you know. I, I think it's not not a secret. It looks like like uh, Shakur's just this is going, this is his last fight with top rank. I don't know if he's gonna renegotiate, resign, or he's gonna move on. So I could see where where top rank is not gonna. Put him in against one of their fighters uh, because Shakur is very talented. Shakur mm -hmm. is very talented. We're willing to fight him because we know Remen is very talented and has a big chance of, of, of winning. Mm -hmm. But it's not an easy fight either. Mm -hmm. So so maybe that was Top Rank's decision to not even bring up his name. We were not told they didn't bring it up. We told him we wanted it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Good to hear. We didn't know they didn't bring up his name. Mm -hmm. No, I thought they did, but they didn't. So, so you know, top rank knowing why well, you were told, well, you were told they did bring up his name. I was, yeah, but it looks like Shakur, yeah, Shakur says no. So that's where it's kind of like you know, you know, you were told they did bring up his name. So you know what I mean. So that's where, so that's where you know, it's it's, it's negotiations. I understand that you know he's he's looking at his last fight. You know, I was saying, you know, a guy that's pound for pound, one of the best fighters in the world, probably the most yeah. talented yeah. fighter in the world. Uh, Fighting a guy that lost his last fight doesn't look good, you know. It's not, you know, it's something that that uh kind of kind of kind of backtracking. Exactly, you know. But uh but 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 look, when you're in, the, in your last fight with a contract, you just want to get out. Maybe maybe right. he just wants to get out. Maybe he just getting the easiest fight out there to get out and 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 be a free agent and go pick huge fights. I don't know. You know, maybe they're gonna be negotiating. I really don't know if he's gonna resign. So that had a lot to do with 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 him, sure. them not even bringing up Raymond, mm -hmm. and I don't blame it either. You know, I I can't be mad at that either. I can be mad at Shakur, and I cannot be mad at Top Rank too. You know, it's a business. Yeah, every every team, every <clears throat> every fighter, every team, every, every fighter has their team, and they all have their plans of of what they want to do. Uh, we can't force guys to to 
you know, do stuff that we want them to do. Obviously, we want Raymond to fight Shakur. Uh, we want Raymond, you know, uh, Tofimo Lopez was brought up to to you about potential fight with Raymond. You said yes. Um, and then Tofimo fights, you know, who, yeah, Tofimo fights who he fights. Um, and obviously, like I said, Tofimo and Shakur, they have their own teams. They have their own managers. They have their own trainers, their parents, whoever's involved in their careers who help them, you know, manage, you know, their careers and choose certain guys at certain times. And we can, we can be mad at them for doing what they do. The only problem we, that the only problem I see with that is the same problem that we see with like, like we see with Canelo. If you're the world champ and you have guys like, like Shakur Stevenson, um, if, if he, you're the world champ, you have not mandatory because Raymond's not mandatory, but you got guys that are, that are ranked, ready to 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 fight for your title you should be fighting guys that are you know like the highest ranked guys if that makes sense um you know we see that a lot with canelo with benavides where he's the mandatory guy for the wbc if you don't plan on fighting him then just vacate the wbc title let him for fight for the title um it shouldn't be that difficult for some for a fight between raymond and shakur to happen raymond delfimo to happen if they're with the same promotion the they're, you know that's the point of being with that same promotion is you get your your ability to get those fights so it shouldn't be that difficult to make the fights but again shakur has his team has his people you know that they 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 decide what they what's best for his career obviously we we would love that for raymond and and you know obviously that's what we would want but again you know they're the world champs they they kind of they can choose what they want to do uh, did Raymond talk to you guys after the fight? Like, did he say anything about his performance or anything? Yeah, we talked after. We went to the locker together, and uh, you know, like I said, we're not gonna, we're not gonna come, you know, say anything about it because we don't, you know, it's part of boxing. A lot of fighters always have problems before the fight. A lot of fighters fight injured before the fight. You know, they they get injured before the fight. Of course, last performance himself with De Los Santos, he said his hand was injured or, or whatever the problem was. Um, you know, it, it, that's that's what Shakur said. That's what you know. That's it. Mm -hmm. I mean, wasn't a hundred percent, you know, but, uh, you know, that's why I want to bring them back quick. I have, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be talking to top rank about it and uh, hopefully we could bring them back soon. I'm excited. All right. Moving on to the co-main event, Sinisa Strada versus Yocasta Valle for the minimum weight undisputed championship. Uh, Sinisa won unanimous decision. She's not now the new undisputed. Was it unanimous? Yeah. yeah. Unanimous. <clears throat> so break down this fight and do you guys agree with the decision? Look, I I was watching the first two rounds in the locker room because you know that's when Raymond's changing and, and they started right away. Yeah, I, as soon as as soon as Raymond we were walking to the locker room, uh uh Yoka was already standing mm -hmm. in the walk, you know, to walk into the ring. So they started away. So we missed a lot. You know, I can't I can't say Yoka got robbed because because I didn't see the full fight completely good, you know, everybody's cheering and talking and you know so we seen the right then the locker room we seen the first two or three rounds and i thought and 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 i i thought uh i thought estrada won the rounds i thought she was winning the rounds then we we took off to go find find a seat because we had um you know my my wife and your mom and you know they were sitting down and i i had two seats right there next to them mm -hmm. so i sat there next to them but there was so much cheering. There was a little bit of uh, you know thing going on with some people that were sitting behind us, where they were going for for Estrada. You know, when I got there, I seen I seen Jackie and my mom. My, if you guys my, don't know my, my mom, she my wife cheering for Yoka and Yoka. I'm like, the fuck are, we're supposed to go to for Cerise Estrada, Cerise, yeah. California. She's, right. gonna, she's like, nah, can I? We like this girl better. All right, well then. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. So the people in the back they were going for they were going for Senisa. So they started saying stuff things that they shouldn't be saying. You know, we got into a little bit of a you know. So the, we missed a lot of the fight. Yeah. We we didn't see the whole fight. You yeah. know, even 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 uh, even you know your mom and Carla they didn't see it. Re they didn't really see it completely. Like to judge who really won. We thought and they thought and it, you know it looks like. Yeah, maybe Yoka pulled it off, but we haven't. But I haven't really seen it to to really make a decision. Mm -hmm. I I've talked to a lot of people. Some people tell me Yoka fought, but then a lot of people also say that Sinisa won. Mm -hmm. It was so close. It it was close, I guess. So it's not, it wasn't a real robbery. It was close. Where I think a draw would have been nice. Mm -hmm. What I think is, you know, uh, the the headbutt happened. The headbutt was in the in the first round. Nice. Fuck this! You already have a disadvantage. You're already bleeding. You already stopped that fucking fight, and it's a no contest. 
and then you guys are going to fight again. Believe me, they would have done the fight again. So that gives Yoka another another fight, another payday, and she'll fight 100% because with a cut already blood going into your eye, you're definitely not going to be 100%. And we're going to go, you know, with that more. same thing a little bit more after. But if it was me in the corner, I wouldn't even try to work the cut. I would have stopped it. Like, we're done. <laughs> I would have stopped it. I, my, my, draw, my, we're, we're having a rematch. Anymore. My father can't see. Go to a no contest, and really? yes, the fans are gonna be mad. Yes, the promoters are gonna be mad. Yes, ESPN is gonna be mad. But I, but I'm protecting my fighter because mm -hmm. she already has the disadvantage, and I'll take her to a rematch. Mm -hmm. And the rematch would be big, and that's gonna be another, another huge pay. Another fight. everything. I would have done it a hundred percent because it was a headbutt. Yeah, I I thought Yokasta Valle won. I thought Yocasta Valle won. I thought she won seven rounds to five. I wouldn't have been mad at a draw or, a, you know, seven to five for Ceniza Estrada. It was a good fight. Oh, it was a ten round. Oh, yeah. Sorry, 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 sorry. My bad, my bad. Um, six to four, maybe. Six to I had four. six to four. Sorry. I'm, yeah, I had a six to four for Yocasta Valle. Um, I wouldn't have been mad at a draw. Yeah, I, was I would have been mad at a draw. You know, Ceniza won. You know, uh, Ceniza won. Um, I thought Yocasta Valle won. Um... I found myself like my mom and them like rooting for Yocasta Valle. We were at the house. Um, I don't know what it was. I've always been a fan of Sinisa Estrada. She seems, you That's know, cool. I, 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 I've met her in, in, in Golden Boy promotion. Yeah, yeah, so I've met her a few times. She seems real cool. During this, during this build up to the fight, she seemed That's like she seemed like like you could, in a way you could say arrogant. She would look kind of like looking down at Yocasta Valle, kind of like you know, like I'm better. I'm the you know. And I didn't. I, it turned me off a little bit um, as a, as a fan. You know which 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 fan. I don't. Yocasta Valle. Uh, I've met her one time. She came to one of our shows. Um, I didn't even talk to her. I just you know she came in to give her a wristband. She walked into the event. I don't. I didn't talk to her. I can't. You know. I don't know her. Um, I would have thought. You know. I when the fight started, I would have been rooting for Senisa Estrada. But again, the buildup. You know, I I started rooting more for for Yocasta. She seemed a little bit more humble. A little bit more more sure of herself too. The night before, we were watching ESPN in 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 my room, and uh, and and I was watching that thing they do with Christina Puncher, like yeah, the yeah. Top, top. Yeah. yeah, there you go. And 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 uh, and Estrada, yeah, you know, saying you know this is personal, you know, yeah. she's my enemy, and you know, but I think it was it, she's a good she's a great person too, man. You know, like you said, Peter, we've known her since you know since the Golden Boy times a few years back and and we seen her develop. Then we, she signed with gold, with Top Rank and we were excited about her because she's local, Southern California. But I think that the way she was saying, the way she was talking, the way she, it was just like to to pump herself and to, and to believe that she, that it, I don't think she's, she's, I don't think she's never been like that. Mm -hmm. She's never been like oh, that's that. That's why, that's why it caught me by surprise. And, 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 and uh, but, yeah. but I think it was more too. For herself to to like to, pump to, up. to to pump herself up to to believe in herself like that because she's not that type of person. But but then but then when she was saying that, then uh, Yoka Valle would respond, "Enemy, you know, she's not my enemy. She's my she's my she's my uh, she's my opponent. Yeah, you know, yeah. we're in there. You know, we're we're here to fight because this is a sport. But she's not my enemy. She's my opponent. You know, so kind of that kind of kind of." Like, uh, like, uh, we kind of like Yoka yeah. too, because of you know, and 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 she's, she, I've met her a few more times. Uh, she's really nice too, she really is. nice. Her, her trainer always been really nice to me. So I kind of, it was kind of hard for me to to pick to pick sides. So I would just want to see a good fight, you know. But being they that, delivered though, that was a really good fight. Huh? They delivered. Yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> being that, being that, being that, uh, Estrada, you know, is from Southern California. Uh, we seen her. I kind of really, really like deep inside wanted her to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, with with, okay. with the with the Yoka Valle, she seemed a little bit more sure of herself all fight week. She was more calm. She wasn't talking too much. I it, it came off with a lot of confidence. Um, Senisa came off a little bit more arrogant during fight week. So I found myself rooting for for Yoka Valle. But but when you know when the fight did start, I was trying to judge it. You know, as fairly not. You know. I thought Yoka was put was was landing the 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 better shots. Um, Senisa would land more of how do how do I how do I explain it? Like, um, she would land like one wide hook, and it would it it's it would like be like more of a pop. Like like there was more. It seemed like her punch had more effect on on Yoka Valle, but Yoka Valle was the one more consistently landing the better shots, landing a better jab. Um, 
And then the way they, the, the style of the way they fight. I like the way Yokavaya fights. Um, Senisa is more with her hands down, uh, kind of wide. The way she kind of moves okay. shoulders, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of funky the way she's moving and stuff. Yokavaya is a little bit more hands up, guard up, straight punches down the middle. Um, so I was, I found myself rooting for for Yokavaya when they did announce the decision, and then the way her, her, that's one of the things I didn't like was the way her her trainer. Um, one of the things going into the fight that they kind of used to to build up the fight was that uh Yokavaya's trainer used to help Senisa Estrada and and um. You know when 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 a fight is 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 happening and and you know you get you get kind of like a historic fight. It's you know first time in this weight class for undisputed. I would like all the attention to kind of be on Yoka Valle and Sinisa Estrada. You know, Yoka Valle's trainer seemed like she was trying to get into a lot of you know like trying to push herself into the into into the the spotlight. And then when they interviewed her after, the way she kind of you know she she came off like uh, you know um, Yoka Valle herself too when they asked her about the headbutt it was intentional then her coach says the same thing i didn't like that there, there was not an intentional headbutt it was an accidental headbutt um but the way the way the trainer kind of tried to make you know try to uh me too you know what i mean and and when the fight itself should have just been about the two women making history um so that's well, the only thing that's the only thing but it, it, it was a great fight you know hopefully you know they they, they they're able to do a rematch because they should it was a really really good fight i think if they bring it to Southern California, um, I think they can main event an ESPN. Um, yeah, they can, yeah, they could they can main event ESPN somewhere at the StubHub Center or something like that. They'll do a big crowd. Um, and and I would like to see that. Kind of piggyback on that, piggybacking on that, Sinisa said that she would consider a rematch in the post fight interview if the fight was close. She's not the considering. Fight was very close. She's not. She doesn't believe that. No, the fight um, was very. close. Yeah, what are your guys' thoughts on that though? That I think I think that you know that's her confidence, that's her believing she won, but and and wants to doesn't want to admit it. I think you know top rank, her management team, everybody's gonna tell them we have to do the rematch. Yeah, we have to do the rematch. That close. The fight was close. The fight could have gone either way. I I've talked to different people from top rank who she fights for, and some people have told me she lost. Some of yeah, them. So I I think yeah I don't lost. Think some people also tell me it was very close. You could have gone either way, but some people have some people from Top Rank have told me she lost. Mm -hmm. Look, if you if you look at the landscape of the women's boxing, we should we should see a rematch. If if you look at the landscape of women's boxing, us who are in boxing, obviously we don't follow women's boxing as much as you know a lot of people. But this was like this was the undisputed world title, right? If if there was somebody else that you could say, okay, Senisa can move up and wait. If she moves up one weight class, wait, name me. Abai and Weiwa, name me one world champ at the weight class above where she's at. Yeah, I don't. I couldn't name you one fighter in the weight class above them. I couldn't name you one other fighter in the weight class they're in. I just yeah. know Senisa and Yo and Yokavaye. That's the way women's boxing really is. There's one or two girls in each division that everybody knows. The opponents nobody really follows. Nobody really knows. You're just kind of following. You know Clarissa Shields. You so know who, so who Senisa going to defend against? <clears throat> exactly. So if top rank goes to Senisa and they say you could defend your undisputed title against this random, but it's not going to be the main event. She's not going to be a main event somewhere. The only way she will be the main event and the biggest payday I'm assuming she could get, unless she does move up, you know, four or five weight classes and she wants to challenge fucking Alicia Bumgarner or Katie Taylor or something crazy like that, then okay, you know, go ahead and do that. But if you're going to stay around your weight class, um, it's Yoka Valle. Her and Yoka Valle, like I said, I think they can main event here at the Stuff Up Center. Two more fights. Yeah, they can main event the Stuff Stuff Up Center. They could do it twelve rounds instead of ten. You know, they 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 want to do that for the some of the women. Um, and I think it would I think it would do good numbers here. I think it would do good numbers. They would do good. There's no there's no money over there. No, no, no. It, 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 here in Southern California, Senisa won. Vegas, she deserves that. Vegas, yeah. something. Like no, nah, I think Southern California is it for because Senisa's from here. Senisa won. She's the undisputed champ. You know, like you said, she does. She says, "Oh, it was it was a close fight." Everybody think, agrees. And Valle, and Valle got a lot of fans too. So a lot yeah, of people, she, even in LA, she they'll, they'll support. It her. would be a big it'll be a big crowd here in LA. I love it. Okay. Moving on to the main event, Oscar Valdez became the new WBO interim junior lightweight champ world champion after stopping Liam Wilson in the seventh. Give us your guys' thought on that fight, and what did you guys feel when he be he became Valdez him? is a Valdez is a bad motherfucker. You know what, uh, Valdez Valdez, from knowing him personally, mm -hmm. not saying not telling no to nobody when it comes to a picture, an interview, the the coolest guy out there. 
always shown me nothing but for the years and years that I've known him, you know, respect. Uh, he's just, you can't, you cannot wish him well. And then the way he fights, that fucker has balls, man. That fucker <laughs> has the heart. He fucking goes out there. He's not worried about vaciarse como la, la cara fighters are worried about throwing a three, four, five punch combination because they're going to get tired. No. He doesn't care. No. And even if he gets tired, he's, he's going to continue. There's very few fighters like that. Very few fighters that even if they, even if they're not afraid to get tired because they know they they're, they could mentally beat that. Mm -hmm. And he's one of those guys. He throws, he swings one round. He swings so fucking hard, 20, 30 punches the whole round where others would, would, wouldn't do that because they know. Don't need a round off. Don't need, fighters. yeah. We've seen it. We've seen it with so many fighters that one round, they're fucking almost knocking their point out. Next round, they're dead. Yeah. They're tired. He's, he's the opposite. This guy, you know, he could be taking a beating or getting hit. He comes back stronger, finishes stronger. Next round, he's even stronger. That's where you, that's why I fucking got to love watching that dude mm -hmm. fight. Uh, all respect to him, you know, because it's all him, you know, his heart, his mind. It's not about, because did we see a good fucking combination, good counter? Good, no, he just fucking went out there swinging. <laughs> he does not He care. gets hit, yeah. but he's swinging. Yeah. This fight, now, the fight started fight. off. We didn't see anything where, where okay, he fucking jab, step back, boom, 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 counter, move to the red. But no, he fucking went there to fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the fight started off kind of kind of scary for him. The other dude, Liam Wilson, is not, not an easy, easy Ooh. guy. He was landing some solid shots on Valdez. And like you said, we didn't see something like where, where you're like, oh, shit, you weren't, um, how do I say it? Like, there wasn't something that catches your attention. Like, like when you watch... Lomachenko or you watch Bam or you watch, you know, real defensive. No, Valdez just outwilled, you know, the opponent. Uh, Valdez showed in the fight with like Berchel. He showed that he can move, he could box, and he has more to just like a brawler. He's more than just your average brawler. But this performance itself wasn't like that. This performance was Valdez just showed that he he had more, you know, than 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 his opponent. Um I think Valdez is one of the one of the guys that at least for me, the the more his career is going, the more you appreciate him, the more you respect him, the more you look up to 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 somebody like that because he's he's lost already a few times. He's lost in different to different styles. He lost to Shakur. He was outboxed. Obviously, one of the one of the hardest guys to hit. One of the best defensive fighters in boxing right now in Shakur. He lost to Manuel Navarrete, who is the complete opposite of Shakur, who is. Does nothing by by the book. He doesn't probably doesn't throw a single jab all fight, all wild uppercuts, jumping from all over the place. A completely different style, and he and 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 he came up short in that one. But he keeps coming back, keeps giving you performance after performance of of you know what 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 Mexican fans love to see. Where he's had his jaw broken, he's been dropped, he's been hurt, bloodied up, just different things, and he never gives up. He never gives up, and one of one of the things that that I appreciate in, in in a fighter is when you could tell that that the fighter loves fighting, not just not just what it brings or or the money it, it provides for you, or because you could tell Valdez when he loses, you could tell it hurts him. They they've showed him on ESPN when he gets to the locker room and he's and he's crying, he's apologizing to his team when he wins, the way he reacts, um, the way he reacts to winning fights, um. Like this that's one, he some, fell to the ground. That's something that, as a fan, it, it 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 makes you appreciate the guy because you know he's giving you everything he has, as opposed to somebody who who does it because, um, you know they're gonna they're they're gonna make a lot of money or or they make business decisions yeah. when they fight. Valdez doesn't do that. Valdez Valdez is a fighter, mm -hmm. and 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 as his career goes. We don't. I don't know how long, how much longer he has left because he, like I said, he's been through a lot already. He's been through a lot of tough fights, a lot of wars, a lot of you know. He's already lost two times. He's you know he might go another two three years, but who we don't know how long Valdez wants to keep fighting for. You know, um, but as long as he does, you know, the more and more his career keeps going, the more and more I see you know I see and and appreciate and respect somebody like Valdez because that dude is is the definition of of of, of the word fighter. Uh, he said that there's still a lot in store for him and he wants to bring back old school boxing where the best fight the best. Now that he has this title, obviously we don't know if Navarrete is going to stay at 135 or not, but if he does, who out of all of the current 
champions in junior light junior lightweight, which one would you like to see him unify with? If 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 it we're just talking about the guys in junior lightweight, which is I believe it's Valdez, Shaki, oh Shaki Foster, Joe Cordina, and I'm missing. No, the the, the oh. Yeah. oh wait. Como se llama? If we're just going off of yeah, um, like, beat, uh, yeah, the guy that beat uh, no, no, that's one the guy that the that's guy that beat uh, the guy that beat uh, Garcia, Hector Garcia. Yeah, I remember Lamont Roach. Yeah, Roach. So Lamont Roach, Lamont Roach is WBA champ. Yeah, 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 he is. So if he you is, give yeah. me between those guys, I would probably pick Oshaki Foster. I think that would be that would be a great fight. But if you just give me just somebody that he can fight, I would rather see him fight Venado. They had Venado there. Hey, they both, they were both in attendance. Venado, Venado was there. Oh, they interviewed Venado. I had, I had lunch uh, with Team Venado and Top Rank. That's what he was there for. I think that fight's going to happen. That's just going to be bad. That, that is. That's just going to be shit. like, yeah, man, to fight Valdez. Oh. If, well, look, if obviously, it's a negotiation too. Valdez has his team, and so does uh, Venado. But... Uh, I, I would love that, man. Actually, imagine if the... you give me one one fight to pick Ross Valdez, I'm picking. I'm picking Venado. Venado is so fucking cool too. Venado is so fucking. Him. He's a character, it was man. So funny. I saw him. I was walking. I was gonna go upstairs, and then I was going towards the elevator, and I don't know where. I just see him yelling. I don't know what his manager or promoter. I don't know, not his promoter. Uh, his. I don't know what's his manager's name. The one we were talking to. Yeah, what's the name? The one that yeah, he's that... been to the gym. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, he does a party. I don't know. But anyways, I just Ferco, Ferco. I, yeah, I see. I just hear him yell Ferco, and I turn around, and he's holding his belt. He's like, "I'm here," and I was like, "What the hell?" No, that, yeah, that was so a, crazy. A, a true character. He's been to the gym to spar. I think he's a fucking character. But Valdez is such a great person. Honestly, right there, I, I don't know if people will get my opinion on who I think is gonna win. Who is your favorite? I I would I wouldn't I wouldn't want to see neither of them lose. Uh, I would love to see them both win. So, mm. you know, it, I, both I would pick win. Valdez in that one. I think he's just a okay. bigger guy. He's yeah. been through, he's uh, he's, he's more experienced at the top level. I think I would favor Oscar Valdez, but that would be the one fight that if I could pick a fight for Oscar Valdez, I would pick that because, um, you know, there's there's other fights like, you know, Oshaki Foster would be a good fight, but I don't think they're bigger fights than him versus Venado. Him versus Venado, you put that, you know, Mexican, in Mexican, yeah, Mexican versus Mexican. You put that in, in maybe in Valdez, you know, in Arizona where Valdez is from. You put that in Southern California. You put that somewhere in Texas. You put that somewhere where the Mexican fans will be able to attend the fight. Arizona would be perfect because Renato's from Mexicali, which is not very far either. Perfect. So you put that shit in Arizona, huge event. I, I don't care if we don't have anybody on the undercard. That's a fight that I would travel to. Yeah, right. um, I would like to see Valdez. Him versus yeah. Oshaki Foster would be a good fight. I think that's a good, it, it, it's a good unification fight. Two good fighters. I mean, great fighters. Um, but if you talk about just all out action and 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 just one fight that you get to pick for others, I'm picking Venado. It's not even close. Damn. <laughs> that would be that a would fucking be bad crazy. Fight. Let's manifest it. Hopefully, hopefully we get that. All right, that was it for top rank, Steven. Let's move on to PBC. Uh, Kermel Moten became 3-0, two knockouts after having a first time going to a unanimous decision. I mean, just the distance versus Anthony Kuga. He got a unanimous decision. Um, I only saw the last round of this fight, but talk to... I don't know if you saw the full thing, but talk, talk to us yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I saw it. Uh, Kermel, Kermel's special, man. Uh, he's, he's, something, he's something special. I don't think people understand um, what what it's like to have a 17 year old kid fighting in an eight round fight against somebody like Anthony Cuba. I'm not and saying, third, and, third, sorry, third guy third undefeated fight. too. So yeah. I'm, I, I don't, yeah, but his first two guys, look, let's be real. They were undefeated, but those guys were bad. They were not good <laughs> opponents. Anthony Cuba was, was a good fighter. We're not, I'm not talking, uh, I don't think Anthony Cuba is like a world championship level fighter. I'm not going crazy either, but for a 17 year old kid to go eight rounds, he got hit with some big overhand rights. He got hit with a lot of shots, but he took it well. Um, you know, when you're developing a fighter, we were talking about Emiliano Vargas. When you're developing a fighter, you want them to go through that. You you don't want your fighter to get to a 12 round fight against a, a top level guy having never been stunned or never gotten hit clean or never been dropped or just you want them to go through stuff. Obviously, if you could go, you know, where you don't never get dropped, okay, that's not a big deal, but you want them to go through stuff. Um, you want them to develop properly. This was a great fight for him. Even though he's just 17 years old, 
Anthony Kuba gave him really, really good, tough rounds where Carmel got hit with some solid, clean shots. Um, but he doesn't stop coming. He's he's a he's a a great pressure. Um, but he does it with with skill. It it it's. I don't want to go as far as to say like something like Chocolatito because Chocolatito is is one of the I think one of the best pressure fighters that we've seen in recent memory where it's pressure but great defense. He rolls a lot of punches and and Carmel. Carmel's like that where he's putting pressure. He's got a great tank, a great motor. Um, he doesn't stop. He doesn't stop uh, putting pressure, but it's with with great skill. Um, I'm I'm a big fan uh, of Carmel. Um, I'm excited to see how how fast how fast they really develop him because if he's doing this at 17, eight rounds, um, we could see him become world champ by the time he's 19, 20 years old, and that seems insane for 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 anybody a 19 year old to become world champ but i think if if there's anybody that you could pick in boxing that could probably do it it's carmel i think right yeah. now i think right now with with what they're doing he only you know with only three fights already fighting around already fighting those type of guys they're gonna they might might even be sooner peter they're mm -hmm. they're going fast with him and uh and he's showing it he i'm pretty sure he's showing it in the gym he's sparring those 10 12 rounds in the gym and 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 and, and it doesn't matter who he's sparring so they're they're going faster than probably what you what you just said two three years. I think eighteen. I, I think the plan is to go faster, and I think he could. What way is he finding? One thirty. One thirty. So so one thirty. Obviously, you got you got it's it's a whole nother level once you get to the world title level. You got guys like Oscar Valdez. Uh, we we're talking about Shaki Foster and these guys. Um, obviously that's still yeah. We don't even know who's gonna be champ by the time he gets there, but. I think they do believe that he could beat a lot of those guys. That's why they're I moving think, him so I fast. Think, I think five or six fights in one more year, and I think they're going to put because they're already fighting in rounds. So that means he's going to do one one more eight rounder and then go to ten. Go straight to ten. So I think I think he's going to be he's going to be he's going to be six seven and already fighting ten rounds, already ranked in the world, and and he could be champion, especially if one of the champions you know vacates or something. I, th no, I think they're, they they. He, yeah, they, than what you expect and, and, and the thing that people need to understand is as much hype as Lomachenko got and as much as any everybody wants to give him credit for oh in his second fight he became he fought for the world title in his second fight became champ in his third fight this is a hundred times more impressive this is a 17 year old kid Lomachenko did a lot of those world series of boxing those are basically professional fights you're fighting with small gloves no headgear um five rounds those are basically professional professional fights already. He did a lot of those. This kid is 17 years old. What, 27? Yeah, and he and he turned pro like at 25, 26 years old. He's a grown ass man. This kid is 17 years old. This the the, the hype he's getting, he it's 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 not like it's not hype because it's not fake. This kid is legit. Do you know the story on why he became a professional so young? Well, because because look at him, you know, like they the saw, backstory. Like, do you know the they backstory? saw him in the gym? They saw him in the gym. They said, "Fuck that! This kid's not fighting in the amateurs. He's not trying to go to the Olympics. This kid's gonna win a world title by the time he's 18, 19 years old." Damn, that's crazy. Wait, I yeah. You I, know why? No, I was. Oh, like, I thought I was you brought it up because no, something. No. Oh no. no. Yeah. No, I thought she was gonna say, "Oh, I do you know why?" Know. Oh, it's because of. Nah. <laughs> no, I wanted to know. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I got your hopes up. Anyways, moving on. So, Isaac Pitbull Cruz became the new WBA super lightweight champion after knocking out Roly Romero on the eighth round. Uh, this is his first time at 140. Had a dominant performance. What do you guys think of him in that weight class? I think at 140, 135, he could come back to 35, but he could still stay at 140 and still compete against all the, 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 the fighters there. You know, that style, that uh, the way he fights, I'm, I've, I've said it. So many times, sometimes we even got into a little bit of uh, discussions with Pita because no, that's he gives trouble to anybody because that's the style. You know, you can't really find his fucking chin. He's so awkward, difficult. He, you know, he's gonna give anybody trouble. I'm not saying he beats he beats them, but he's gonna give everybody he's gonna give everybody trouble. Mm -hmm. Nobody has an easy fight against Pitbull. Nobody at 135 or 140. Nobody has an easy fight. I think this was the perfect fight for him to. To build his his brand, his 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 um his fan base, because um one of the things that I got that, that that you gotta give credit to is 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 the the power and and the 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 fame of the stardom of like Javante Davis. So you got Rollies who fought Tank and Pitbull who fought Tank. They became really really popular kind of boxing superstars because 
Rollies was talking a bunch of shit to Tank, so he got a lot of attention. Um, Pitbull gave Tank probably his toughest fight so far. So these guys, you know, that them being attached to Tank, that's what I really got from it. Is that like I was I was watching you know the way the crowd reacted to Pitbull winning and and then as big as a, a name as Rollies his guy and and the the common denominators that they both face, you know, Javante Davis, who's probably one of the biggest superstars in boxing right now. Um, Pitbull gave him his toughest fight, um, but he lost. The one thing that was kind of missing from him it was becoming a world champ. Um, I think this was the perfect fight for him. Rollies, I've always said, and I and he's not a top level fighter. Um, he kind of was gifted by by the referee his world title. Um, and t- and and Pitbull was, you know, it, this was it couldn't have it couldn't have gone better. Somebody who talks trash, um, somebody who's air, you know, look, was talking down on Pitbull and. And and the Mexican, the Mex, especially the Mexican crowd, that we love that kind of stuff. You know, you got a a, a a a you know somebody talking shit and a loud mouth, a Mayorga type of you know Mayorga, and then Oscar knocks him out. That's huge for Oscar De La Hoya. You got Prince Nassim Harmed, Marco Antonio, Marco Antonio Barrera shuts him up. Uh, you got Adrian Broner, and even though Maidana's not Mexican, but who doesn't love to watch Adrian Broner, you know, get shut up by Maidana? Um, I think this was something similar, and 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 I think it's gonna it's gonna help Pitbull. Um, get, I think get the rematch with Tank at the end of the year. I think that's what we're gonna see next. And uh, Pibble deserves it, man, because he's he's a fucking superstar. You know, we're gonna talk about the main event right now. Um, from watching it, me on the phone, obviously uh, we weren't there, but I was watching it on the phone. There was a big drop off from the way the crowd was into it, and 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 as excited as the crowd was for Pibble to when they moved over to Tim Zhu and Fundora, which was a great fight. There was blood. It was it was it was a really good fight. It was a really good fight. But the atmosphere seemed like it was a huge drop off after Pitbull fought, yeah. and 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 you know, like I said, I think that's gonna help him get the the, the Gervonta fight. Um, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be huge. I think it's gonna be a huge fight now. Pitbull's just getting more and more. Uh, he's getting a bigger fan base. He's getting. I mean, and and you love to see it for especially for somebody like him, man. He's, he's, he's a superstar. It doesn't matter if if Mexico has Canelo. Half Mexico don't like Canelo. Half Mexico support him. Pitbull. Everybody. Everybody, yeah. El, com, el, 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 people don't give a fuck. People wants to fight. You guys. El es más a... como 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 cuando salió Navarrete uh, when he fought in uh, on Shakur's undercard y salió con la de uh, el hijo del pueblo. Mm-hmm. Like you, that's more of like what people is. Yeah, He's but you know what? But look, I think Navarrete. Like bring now that you brought up Navarrete, because they could also be in the same weight class if if, if people comes down. 35. Oh, I can imagine that fight. That, that, that was, that's what I was gonna say. But but look, but but honestly, Navarrete, if he wins, he's already gonna be a four division champion. This is people's first title, first championship. I think people's a bigger star, way bigger star, Navarrete. not even close. And Navarrete's a four, and he also fights fucking badass. Fucking, they don't give a fuck. They throw punches. They they never give up. Navarrete got dropped pretty bad against the guy that uh, Wilson, and he got up and still knocked him out. So he's been to what. He's been through what people Mexicans love to see. Mm-hmm. You getting dropped and getting up and winning. You 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 getting you you losing and coming back and winning stuff like that. But I still think people's a bigger star. Yeah, and I'm telling you, I think I think that has a lot to do with him giving Tank the fight that he gave him. Um, him going against a big loud mouth like Rollies and and just talking trash and and then being able to knock him out. That has a lot to do with it. Now, Barrete hasn't had those opportunities with guys like that. You know, he fought Valdez, but when, when it's Mexican against Mexican, you actually get d- divided. Like, you know, if you ask people who, who like, who are your favorite fighters, nobody's going to tell you, or, you know, at least I don't, I don't say Barrera and Morales are my favorite fighters. I'm a Morales guy. You know, there's, you that's, that's kind of what, what you get when you get two Mexicans kind of going at it where you got half against, you know, but when you got... Especially against Tank and, 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 and especially Tank, who's, who's a, a black African, you know, American kind of not, I mean, he's not, he doesn't come off as cocky, but, um, you know, he's the big superstar and you got the Mexican coming against, everybody's going to support the Mexican. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Now, Barrete's biggest fight was when he fought Valdez, but you get the two, the separation of the two Mexican, you know, one, one roots for, you know, half rooting for Valdez, half rooting. There's nobody that was, there are no Mexicans that were rooting for Tank or Rollies. They're all supporting Pitbull. I think that's helped him a lot. That's cool. You guys kind of answered my question when you guys were talking about it, but I was gonna ask, did you guys imagine that fight going the way it did? Yeah, yeah, that was that yeah, was yeah, yeah. That, look, Rollies that was had no, no chance. Uh, 
There's no question. No question that that Pitbull was going to win, you know, and and the way he did, you know, we just it was just fun to watch. Right. It was fun, <laughs> fun to watch. We were in the locker room, you know, where uh, Le Leonardo Rubalcaba, Ronaldo had a good win, you know, good four round decision. Uh, he fought in Long Beach, but yeah, we were watching it on the phone, mm -hmm. and the whole the whole locker room, the whole locker room was watching it with were, us. They were watching it with us, you know. We were hoping they would keep the 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 the, the break. Longer. <laughs> <laughs> we were watching it on a stream, and I believe it was the seventh round where Pitbull was like touching up Rolly, and it froze on us like right when it happened. We were just you guys didn't pay for it. It was a stream, no? The clocks that you guys. I don't had? do shit like that. What the fuck, oh, fuck Beva? Beva. One of the one of the one of the things too that 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 I don't that I don't know if we're gonna touch up on, but um, is that you know the this whole PVC going to like Amazon Prime. This felt like a really big event. Like um, Al Heyman's PVC and and some and the guys that they have on their stable and stuff. There's a lot of them that that seem like they're they're like it's an event. Like every kid at the gym when they got there today, did you see Pitbull or, or going into it like last week? Oh yeah, are you gonna watch Pitbull and Rollies? Like this new deal that Al Heyman has with PVC and Amazon. Like I hope they get it right. I hope they get it together and we're get, gonna start getting more events. Because it's important to boxing. They got some big superstars. Tank, uh, Canelo, and all these guys, Rollies, Pitbull, all these guys, they're big stars. This pay-per-view uh, event uh, uh, big. Looks, looks like it's going to be a, a really good show, oh, too. Oh, yeah, that one's going to be huge. When people hear the, the whole card for that, it's going to be huge. But um, like I said, the kids at the gym, the week before, then today at the gym, everybody, the parents, everybody's talking about Pitbull and Rollies. Everybody's talking about the event. The pay per view seemed like it just seems like a big event with Al Heyman and then and and PBC. Maybe a lot of people don't agree with the way they do stuff or or you know certain things. Every promoter has their pros and cons, but they're important for boxing. Al Heyman, um, his whole stable. Um, I hope they're able to get not just the pay per views because they're just rolling out pay per views right now. I hope they're able to work it out where they get the regular, you know, like they had regular Showtime, you know, Showtime app, you know, uh, Showbox, or they figure some stuff out because we need to see more of these events. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on to the main event, Sebastián Fundora became the new WBC and WBO junior junior middleweight champion. Uh, like we mentioned earlier, that was a bloodbath after that cut that Tim Su suffered with an elbow, accidental elbow. Um, how much of an impact do you think that had on his overall performance? A hundred percent, a thousand percent. There's, there's, you know, he was bleeding so much throughout the what was it, ten round? It was in the second round, right? So yeah, so ten round. rounds. Ten rounds. Just kept going, kept going a Not lot, so. a lot in his eyes, even even mentally, even physically, with so much blood that he lost. You know, it was just that bad. You know, you know, good for Fundora. They didn't do anything about it. He became <laughs> champion now. He's now unified champion. He's looking at a huge payday against uh against uh Aero Spence. That's what I, what it looks like. There, you know, there'll be also order that he has to fight uh that he has to fight Crawford. I don't think he's gonna fight Crawford. I think he's gonna fight Spence and maybe vacate the WBO. But uh, but he he got he got himself a huge fucking payday. So good for him. Mm -hmm. Good for him, honestly. You know, they're also from here from Southern California. His dad himself, uh, Fundora, his sister, they've all shown us nothing but respect. So I, I'm happy for for the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I I honestly honestly don't think uh Fundora wins the fight if that cut doesn't happen. Um, and for that reason, I think I think Tim Zhu's team they did him a big disservice. Um, I think Tim Zhu, I think I think Ellie brought it up today that they asked somebody asked him after the fight like why didn't they stop him? He said he's a warrior, this and that. Um, that's good, and you want your fighter to do that. That what? He's dumb. Yeah, yeah. You're so, always so. gonna say no. He's a warrior. He's a warrior. He's a, there's well, he is a warrior, but not him. Or no, no, but it was funny how that. Fight, yeah, the fighter has to think like that. The fighter, you, he's a fighter. Tim Zhu. You got to give him his credit, him and Fundora, for like we talked about when we found out that they switched opponents. You got to give them a lot of credit for taking on, you know, um, especially Tim Zhu. Because I think Fundora, if you're fighting somebody orthodox, similar size from from Boa Chuck, or I, I don't know how to, uh, to to Tim Zhu, obviously two different opponents. But OK, but if you go from fighting fucking Keith Thurman, who's like 5'8", orthodox to six foot seven southpaw, like you got to give these guys credit just for taking the fight. That alone shows a lot. But Tim Zhu's corner and and his team they really failed him because he this was for the this was for the unified uh championship of the world 
um, you don't worry, you don't, you don't make decisions or you don't let your guy go out there with, with, with that. Um, there's some stuff that, 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 that there's some stuff that, okay, he's got a cut under his eye. He's got this, or, you know, there's certain things. Okay. You could deal with it. That nobody was stopping that cut. I don't think people understand that stitch stitch did an interview. One of the most recognized cut men in, in, in boxing and MMA. Um, he said, nobody could have stopped that. He's like, you, as much as you work on it, doesn't matter what medicine you have, what, when you get cut in certain spots and certain, there's certain like veins or I don't remember how or arteries or whatever he said that it's going to keep gushing out blood, no matter what you do. Um, I, I, I don't know how, you know, how true it is, or I don't, you know, I would have to ask stitch, but I've seen also uh, when you get cut, like on the bridge of the nose, usually those kind of cuts, it, it's almost impossible to stop them. There's certain spots that you're not gonna be able to stop that cut. That right there was not going to stop gushing no matter what. His team should have should have been more more. Um, they should have protected him better. They should have either stopped the fight. There's 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 a few scenarios where if if you feel like you you won, let's say it happened in the second round, but you won the first one. You think you won the first one. You think you won the second round. So you're like, okay, we need to win one more round. So you win the round. You, yeah, you need to win one or two more rounds. So you tell them, I need two rounds after the second round. You tell your fighter, I need two rounds. Give me everything you have in these two fucking rounds. I don't care if you gas out, if you have nothing left, just give me two more rounds. After the fourth round, you stop it, you win the fight. Because yeah. you go to the scorecards. Yeah. Go to the scorecards. Oh, or yeah. if, if 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 you right away you you see it and you're like, I'm not even gonna send them out there. Fuck this, I'm not gonna take a chance. You stop it, it's a draw or or no contest, whatever it is, and you live to fight another day. Now he's, he's not the champion. The now he's not the world champ. And now Fundora. I was going to bring right now that you were saying that it looks like he might be fighting this and that Samson Lukowitz, his, his promoter came out and said that they had a verbal agreement to a, a rematch with Tim Zhu. Oh, like, like they had a verbal agreement. It wasn't written because he said everything was done kind of last minute. So we didn't agree anything on paper, but verbally we agreed to rematch and you know, we're, we're going to give them that. So they said that that's what they're going to do. So, so if they do that, that's good for Tim Zhu. But Fundora could easily say, fuck that. I'm fighting Errol Spence for fucking however much money they want to pay him. And now they leave t- the hit Tim Zhu's corner, left Tim Zhu in a situation where he just has to wait to, if Fundora is going to give him another shot or, you know, like you're in a bad spot. You're in a bad spot. Um, His team did He's him a disservice. Stupid. He lost his, his belt. You know, he lost his, his, his title. You know, that, that was a big, big mistake from, from the corner. Every fighter is going to say, I, I could still see, I could still fight. I've done it. No, many many times where where I'm not gonna I'm not gonna risk my fighter with a disadvantage. Two had a huge huge, huge disadvantage with that cut. It happened in the second round. Stop that fight. Let your fighter heal, and he's still champion. And then do it again. End of the year, still as a champion, or fight somebody else. That one already passed. Fight somebody else. You're still the champion. Now he's got to come back to become champion. Uh, he's he's got to go after the rematch or maybe find another belt or wait for. And I'm sure he's going to make less money now that he's not the world champ. Now he's a challenger. Wait for somebody else to beat him. You're going to make less money. You know, big big mistake yeah. from the corner. Big mistake. I don't know. I don't even know who they are, but that was a that was a huge mistake. If the rematch does happen and everything's perfect, do you? Do I think Tim Zhu. I think Tim Zhu would have won. I yeah. think Tim Zhu would have won. I think even the way the fight played out. I the last I want to say like the last three rounds I thought Fundora won or something like that I thought he won he won a split decision if yeah. even if I you just stopped did, it, did you they could have stopped it after like the eighth I think or something and he still probably would have got the decision he was probably up on the scorecards um mm-hmm. I thought Fundora won some of the last couple of rounds like he you know what I mean and, and pulled away um I I think I don't think this the I don't think uh a Tim Zhu loses if 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 that cut doesn't happen I think he's just the better fighter I don't think he loses um I think he's I think in a rematch everything goes you know no no elbow and gushing out blood from your forehead I think Tim Zhu beats him All credit to Fundora though because his yeah. whole life changed in yeah, that, that, no no that yeah that has nothing to do with him good yeah. for Fundora like he's you know, now he now he's in the driver's seat. He's also a world champion. The dad. I think they made history. The yeah. first sister and first brother. brother ever in- world titles, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's beautiful, man. They're both champions together. The dad has been training them in their backyard. All that, man. You got to be happy for that family. Definitely. I love that. Um, would you guys want to touch up on anything with that fight? No, I think that's it. The 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 that car, like I, I was I was explaining already. The pay per view was was just it was a great pay per view, man. A credit to everybody that had you know we didn't get into every fight on the on the card, um. But Ray Martinez, you know, picked up his title in a great fight. Um, 
retained this his title. Weekend, sorry, this whole weekend was good for Mexican boxing. Yeah, right? there was, a, you know, Valdez. Um, we didn't get into Surdo Ramirez, but Surdo Ramirez picked up his title. Um, on that first under ever. Alexis Alexis Rocha won. Yeah, first ever cruiserweight to win a world title. Um, but this pay per view itself, then you had Lara who picked who won by knockout, picked up or you know. It was also a lot of Cubans uh, in the weekend. A lot of that yeah. were, were, were with Cuban blood. Yeah. That and also then fought. early early on the card, I think we missed out on Elijah Garcia. He got hurt. That's one of my favorite young fighters right now. He got hurt. He was pulled out. That's why we got to see Carmel on. I'm sorry. Supposed he was fight. supposed to fight. You're right. Yeah, and and um, but then we had Sergey Bochuk. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right. Who picked up a very dominant win, 154 pounds. You know, we didn't have enough time to get into all the fights. Great card from top to bottom. Great action. Big names. It was. It was. It was. It was a great card, man. And 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 credit to 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 everybody that was involved in that. And I hope we get to see more of those pay per views. Um, you know, like we said, it, Mexican for the Mexican fans. It was it was it was a big night. Uh, Valdez on Friday picked up a title. Saturday, uh, you had the first cruiserweight uh, world champ in in Surdo Ramirez, a unanimous decision. And then you had uh, a pitbull picking up the title, a WBA title, one hundred forty pounds. So it's it was a great weekend for not for Mexican boxing. Um, just a great weekend for boxing. Even, even Bora has Mexican blood, man. His mom too. And he's also Mexican American. Yeah. It, it, it was it was a great weekend. A great weekend of fights. All right, and now to end this, Bam Rodriguez versus Gallo Estrada, June 29th, officially. Uh, officially. What can we expect to see from Bam? What, do, what does Bam need to prove now? Like, what? why does... You know, Bam, Bam doesn't need anything to prove. He's already a, a two-division champion, three-time champion of the world, already beat three great fighters in in uh, Quadras, Rungvisai, and last fight, uh, Sonny Edwards. The, all three are great fighters. He's going after his fourth one, man. That's what Bam, you know... People, people, people might say, you know, you know, this kid is, you know, is going too fast or something. But we, there's nothing we could. That's what Bam wants. That's what Bam wants. Bam, Bam literally told you, if if Gallo Estrada is if it's not against Gallo, yeah, if it's not Gallo Estrada on June 20th, I'm not fighting. I'm not fighting. I'd rather spend more time with my with my with my baby because he's got a baby uh, being born this month. Mm -hmm. So so he says, no, nah, I'd rather if it's not against Gallo, the only the only fight that 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 that'll make me train and go back to camp is if it's Gallo. And uh, you know, Matchroom did their job, honestly. They did a great job. It didn't take that long, uh, right? From when we agreed to the fight, it just took what a week or so. Before they told me, before they told me, you know what, Gallo, Gallo already agreed. It was just like like minor details. It was very simple. Um, there's a rematch clause. If Bam is, it, you know, uh, there's a rematch clause. Um, so you know, obviously we expect Bam to win. We'll have a rematch by the end of the year against against Gallo Estrada. But it wasn't it wasn't very difficult. Both guys seem, you know, I think Gallo got to the point where you know earlier before months before he was asking for. Um, he was asking for a uh, like a tune up before he was asking for certain things. But it got to the point where 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 they're like, okay, like you know, um, you know, it's either you take this or you know, he was looking at maybe Ioka, he was looking at you know very different things, but you know, it just it just fell into it just fell into place perfectly for June 29th. That's gonna be can't wait for that one. Footprint in Phoenix, Arizona. Yes, that's so that's gonna be a fight that uh, you know, and they're saying they're putting up a pretty good fight a card. I think Sunny Edwards is supposed to be the coming event. Will be back, so yes, I would put it. But do you think San Diego is gonna take hey, a vacant title? No, it's it's it, it's not a title fight. Vacant titles the Bams vacating. No, Curiel fights at one hundred eight. Oh, he's so son is going to one hundred eight. Yeah. Okay. Well, unless now, Curiel is moving up to one twelve and they're gonna fight for the vacant title, I don't know. I I'm, no, I'm just saying because they Bam, haven't announced Bam anything yet, so we'll see. Up, he's vacating the so that 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 leaves four four opportunities to four fighters. Uh, I I was already you know people you know knowing that you know here. Before the fight was already announced, people were already hearing about it. So I was getting a lot of calls from different promoters, different people, managers. Mm -hmm. Hey, Robert, is your fighter really going to move up? Is he going to make it? Because I got so-and-so right there. Uh, uh, Samper Promotions, they call me. What's happening, Robert? What are you calling me up? And what's happening? Because they got fighters that are that are in line to fight for the for the title. The, I, I don't know if the kid from, from Riverside, como se llama? The one that he just fought, he had a good win, good uh -huh. stoppage. What's his name? El Niño. Yeah, um, Sandoval, Ricardo Sandoval. I was gonna Ricardo say, Sandoval. I think he's up there in the rankings, so he might get a, a shot at Ru one. Rudy's of the kid, Rudy's kid, Antonio Lascuaga from LA, exactly. So, yeah. so, so there's 
two vacant titles, four fighters will fight for the vacant. So hopefully it's somebody you know that we know, like you said, Rudy's fighter, uh, Ricardo, Ricardo uh, Sandoval, uh, Sanfer told me about it. I don't want to mention the names because I know these guys over here. Those I don't know. They told me the names, but I can't. I, you know, I don't want to mention no sure. names because I don't know what what uh, what's going to happen. But there's four fighters that are going to get an opportunity to fight for the world title. So good for them too. This is gonna be another so, another okay, good great. year of boxing so far. Uh, that, 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 this fight's gonna be insane. You know, people are asking me, so what's gonna be the game plan? I don't know what the <laughs> fucking game plan's gonna be. It's gonna be hard, man. Have you been watching Gallo's fights? Fuck yeah, he's fucking tough. Yeah, he's here. <laughs> what would you say are his biggest strengths? Gallo experienced fucking throws punches. You know, man, that just you know he's 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 pound he's pound for pound. Uh, probably the the most talented fighter in Mexico. You know, uh, when it comes to to skills, mm -hmm. he's got great skills, great great uh, reflex, great counter punching. He's a great fighter, man. Great fighter. That's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be a great fight. I cannot wait. All right. Um, would you guys like to touch upon anything before we end the show? No, I think that was that was it. It was a pretty long show. What do we have? Show we got fights next week or what? Uh, is there fights this weekend? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Well, six. The ones in, in Mexico, Chop Chop. Oh. And we, in Mexico City oh, with oops. Albert Gonzalez and Leo Ruiz. But yes. anything big this weekend? Not, nothing I can think of off the top of my head. But if there is, we'll be back next week. I think, I think our match room is having the, the show. Oh, yeah, they have a, yeah, they have a, a Richardson Hitchens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Diego Pacheco. Yeah, so that's going to be, a, you know, probably the... Probably the Only I don't think ESPN game. has anything, do they? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Yeah. All right. Well, they... oh, ESPN does have, have a show, I ESPN think. ESPN has it next weekend, the 13th. Oh, that's right. It is. It's okay, that, that's where it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning into this episode. Hope you guys liked it. Leave your comments, like, share, subscribe, and then we'll see you guys next time.